instructor, and in this mini lecture, we're going to talk about the parts of a neuron. So here's a neuron, and it doesn't have any parts labeled, so let's go through the different parts of a neuron, see where they're located, and talk a little bit about their functions. The first part of a neuron that I want to discuss is the cell body. So here on our neuron, right here, is the cell body, and we'll label it. And the cell body contains all those parts of a cell body that you would see in any cell. Here we can see the nucleus. There would also be DNA, RNA, mitochondria, all those different parts of a cell body. And the cell body runs the cell. It makes the cell go. The next part of a neuron that I want to talk about are the dendrites. All of these branches here, all of these branches here are dendrites. And the dendrites and the cell body are the receiving end. We could also call all of this the input end of the neuron. In our next mini lecture, we'll talk about how a neuron talks to another neuron, and this is where the message is going to start with the dendrites and the cell body. Running away from the cell body is the axon. This is a part of a neuron that isn't necessarily, but can be, very, very long. If you remember from our previous lecture, a neuron is a single cell and some neurons are microscopically small, like many of the neurons in our brain. But some neurons, like motor neurons and sensory neurons, are very long, even though they're single cells. So while I'm short, some of you are much taller than me, you have very, very long motor and sensory neurons going down your legs and your arm, probably about three or more feet long. If you're a giraffe, you have single cell neurons that are even longer. And that's because this part, the axon, which is right in the center here, this part, the axon, is what's so long. All of these axons together are what form a nerve. So remember, lots of neurons form a nerve, and it's this part, the axon. The axon at the end of the neuron will form into terminal branches. So we call these terminal branches of the neuron or terminal branches of the axon. And these are the ending points of our neuron. We would also call this the output end. At the end of the terminal branches, you can see a little swelling here. We will talk about that in our next mini lecture, and these are called the axon terminals. So you can think of just like in an airport where the terminal is at the end, the axon terminals are at the very, very end of the neuron. This here, this white part here, covering our axon, is called myelin sheath. So we'll do an arrow right here and label that myelin sheath. And myelin sheath is very important, especially for these long, long motor neurons. We'll see that in just a second. I want to add la one last thing to our neuron, and that's an arrow. We'll draw an arrow like this, and that shows the direction that the neuron fires. The neuron's message starts in the cell body, goes, or excuse me, starts in the dendrites, goes to the cell body, down the axon, out the terminal branches, and then the axon terminal. So our neuron's message is going to go like this. Here's a neuron from your textbook, and you can see it here. Here's our cell body labeled, and that's the cell's life support center. 
Here are the dendrites. They receive messages from other cells. Here's the axon. It passes messages away from the cell body to other neurons, muscles, or glands. The neural impulse goes in this direction. The myelin sheath covers the axon. And one of the things that it does, and we'll see in just a moment, is it helps speed up neural impulses. And here are the terminal branches. They form junctions with other terminals or with other cells. And then again, right here would be the axon terminal. So remember, here's our neuron. This is the axon right here covering the axon. So this white part covering it is called myelin sheath. And if you notice, there are little spaces of exposed axon between these bundles of myelin sheath. So myelin sheath insulates. In other words, it uh, covers and insulates the neuron from other messages from other neurons. It protects our neuron's axon, it nourishes, and it speeds up the neuron's action potential. And here's how. Let me enlarge this portion right here. So if I've taken that portion, blown it up, and here's inside the axon, here's outside the axon, we'll extend this, and we'll make this a covering of myelin sheath. When the neuron is at rest, there is a negative charge outside the neuron and a positive charge inside. When this neuron fires, in other words, when it gets its message from a preceding neuron, little ion channels open up. And if you remember from your younger days of grade school, negative and positive attract each other. So the negative goes in, the next ch ion channel opens up, and the positive goes out. And this continues all the way down the neuron. But here's a piece of myelin sheath. Let's see what happens. So our our message has gone in and out of the axon. Then it bumps up against insulation. What's so cool is, is that our message then jumps from area of exposed axon to area of exposed axon to area of exposed axon, almost like a kangaroo jumps. And this is in metric, about 400 kilo kilometers per hour. In um, our type of uh, measurement, we would say about 200 miles an hour for myelinated, if we have myelin. If there's no myelin, we're talking about 2 miles an hour. So myelin really speeds up our neural impulse because it lets it jump from exposed node to exposed node to exposed node. You've all probably heard the, uh, of the disease called multiple sclerosis. I happen to have a dear friend who has multiple sclerosis. And when she has a flare-up, she's walking very slowly. She doesn't have that smooth, quick muscle movement in her limbs that most of us do. And that's because multiple sclerosis is a breakdown of the myelin sheath. And when the myelin sheath breaks down, we don't have this quick jumping of the impulse from an uh, exposed neuron called a node, or node of Ranvier is the actual term. We don't, um, Ron VA, R-A-N-V-I-E-R, -E I believe is what it is. And uh, so the node of Ron VA is the exposed um, area of 
of axon and that's how the neural impulse jumps. That's what we mean by an action potential. An action potential is that message going down our neuron and that's how the uh, neuron is going to get it from one end of the neuron to another, the action potential. In an action potential we call it an all or none response. So a neuron doesn't ever fire just a little. It either fires, meaning it sends a message down the axon, or it doesn't. For Imagine if a friend said to you, I kind of fired the gun, it sort of fired. Well, you would laugh at them because a gun either fires or it doesn't. It's an all or none process. The same with being pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. There's no such thing as sort of, you either are or you aren't. And neurons are the same. It's an all or none response. So in this mini lecture, we've looked at the parts of a neuron. We've looked closely at the myelin sheath and what it does. And then we've talked about the all or none response of a neuron firing.